In this video, we're going to look at problems using the rules for exponents. Most of these problems require us to use multiple rules to completely simplify. For our first example, we see exponents inside and outside the parentheses, and so our rule tells us that we should be multiplying these. So it works about like a distributive property. We need to multiply times each piece. So the first one, I will have 7, and then 0 times negative 2 is still 0. Next, I have a, and that would be to the negative fourth power. And then I have b, and so two negatives there make a positive 2 of the exponent. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so 7 to the 0 power is 1, and so I no longer have to write that. So simplifying, I have a to the fourth, and that's negative fourth, and b squared. So in order to finish the problem, b squared stays on the top of the fraction, and a to the fourth needs to move to the denominator so that we have a positive exponent. So using three different rules, we have our simplified answer. Our next example, again, it's using this rule that says we're supposed to multiply. So I can easily see taking the two times the three, but I have to take it times the exponent on every part. So the unwritten one with the x, and the unwritten 1 with the negative 4. Now, this one is here on purpose because of this negative, and we want to practice dealing with that negative. And so when we do that, because of the parentheses, this is negative 4 that is getting squared, because that negative is in the parentheses. And then multiplying, I have x squared, and multiplying again, I have y to the 6. So negative 4 squared, if I need to put that in my calculator to see the value, then I do have to put the parentheses there, and that is 16x squared y to the 6. For our next one, again, this exponent on the outside applies to every part, every exponent. So it applies to the exponent of 1 on the 3 and to the exponent of 3 in the denominator. So modifying the exponents on the top, I have 3 to the 3rd. In the denominator, I have n to the ninth. Simplifying the top gives me 27 over n to the ninth. All right, next one. On the top, I have multiplication, which tells me to add the exponents. So that's going to give me x to the 5th power. On the bottom, I have parentheses, which is where I multiply the exponent. So that gives me x to the sixth power. And then I do the division, which says to subtract. So I get x to the negative 1. And finally, that becomes 1 over x. So four rules of exponents in one problem to get to the simplified answer. Moving to the next one. This one is multiply. There's no addition here, so there's no distributive. It's just multiply. When we multiply, we're going to add exponents. When we multiply numbers, we simply multiply. So when I look at this problem, I see the 3 times 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. x times x squared, I add those exponents and have x to the third, and that's using the unwritten one. For the y, I multiply those exponents, or I add those exponents when I'm multiplying, so 2 plus 4 6. Now the next one does have a plus sign and a minus sign, so this means that we're doing a distributive property to get this one figured out. When I multiply within each one, I will just add exponents to multiply numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6. x squared, x to the fourth, add those up, that's x to the sixth. Put my plus sign, move on to the next term. 2 times the number in 1 is 2. x squared, x to the sixth, so that's x to the eighth by adding. And I have y. Write my minus sign. 2 times 4 is 8. I have my x squared from the front term. I have my y cubed from the last term. 
since they don't have a like base, I don't add those exponents. And so that problem is completely finished. The next one has a fraction. And so what I want to do is I want to reduce that fraction. So I can see that a common factor of 3 could be divided out if I divide both top and bottom by 3. My fraction becomes 1 over 4. When I look at the x terms, I subtract and I get x to the negative 2. Look at the y terms, I subtract and I get y to the negative 2. Notice how I wrote both of those on the top of the fraction. Now, they need to move to the bottom to become positive, so 1 over 4 x squared y. Another way to conceive of this is to take the 3 and divide it by 12, and that would give me 0.25 as the decimal for 1 fourth. And then I do the same work with the exponent, so that would be to the negative 2, y to the negative 2. When I go to write that as a fraction, then the 0.25 is on the top of that fraction because it does not have a negative exponent. And the x squared and the y squared are in the bottom. So these are two equivalent answers, one using the fraction one-fourth, the other one using the decimal of 0.25. For our next example, we've done a lot of these already, some on the previous video. So I know I multiply the exponents, and I know that I have to use every exponent, including the unwritten one on the four. So that gives me 4 to the third power, m to the sixth power, n to the 12th power, and then I can put 4 to the third on my calculator, so 64, m to the 6th, n to the 12th. For the next one, same thing, exponent outside, multiplied to all the exponents inside, and so on the top I have x to the 18th. On the denominator I have y to the 6th. Nothing is going to reduce here because I have different bases of x and y. For our next one, again, multiplying the exponent outside to all of the exponents inside, including the unwritten one that's on the number. We do have a negative here, so that's going to be a tick more work, but let's multiply first. So I have 3 to the negative third. I have m to the negative sixth, n to the positive. So the next thing I do is rewrite, and I put the n to the 6th on the top of my fraction because it's positive, so it's not going to move at all. I put the 3 to the 3rd in the denominator and m to the 6th in the denominator, and then I can get the value of 3 to the 3rd, so n to the 6th, divided by 27 m to the 6th. Our next one. Same deal as before, this exponent that's outside goes to every part, all the exponents inside, including the unwritten one that is on the number. So when I do that on the top, I have a to the negative 10. In the bottom, I have 2 to the negative 5 and b to the negative 15. I see that literally everything is negative, so I completely flip everything. So I have 2 to the 5th on top, b to the 15th on top, and a to the 10th on the bottom. And then I can go to my calculator and get a value. So 2 to the 5th is 32, b to the 15th divided by a to the 10th. Our final example, I have a couple negatives, and I'm going to take care of moving them first because I prefer to work with positives, although you wouldn't have to do this. I see the negative, the 3 is going to stay put, and then I see the negative on the A, so I'll put e to the fourth on the bottom. B squared stays put. Now I'm working with the denominator, there was an A squared, so that stays put. A b to the negative 1 is going to move to the top and become b to the first. Now I can add the exponents, top and bottom, so 3b to the third, divided by 
divided by A to the six. And I have a positive exponent, simplified as much as I can with each link B. So hopefully these examples help you to think through how you would apply the rules of exponents to various sample problems.